Hello, everybody, and welcome to our weekly Traffic Geyser webinars. Uh, today, we're going to be focusing on our submission tool. Most likely, the majority of you that are on this call have joined Traffic Geyser to utilize our power to be able to get your content uh, distributed out to the, uh, to the video sharing sites, the bookmarking sites, so on and so forth. So our, our focus today is going to be to show you how to utilize the tools that are needed in order to get your content distributed. Uh, again, my name is Robin Phillips. I've been with the company for uh, two and a half years. I mainly work in our support department handling the majority of your uh, technical questions that you have when you email us in where you're having issues. We also have Kevin Barnes on the call. Hello. And Go ahead, Kev. Hey, guys. Uh, this is Kevin Barnes. And uh, just like uh, Robin, I've been with the company for about three years now and uh, started out actually as a cl uh, client of Trafficizer. I, I actually re po I, I purchased Trafficizer for my own business and uh, eventually was asked to come on board, started working with the coaching department, then uh, got moved into product development and uh, some management areas. And so I'm really excited to be on the call and looking forward to seeing what I can do and bring to the table to help you get more out of Trafficizer today. All right, thank you very much, Kevin. Appreciate, appreciate you. Uh, the, the webinar is going to be recorded. It will be available on our blog site. I will give you that link in a little while, as well as it will be available through our newsletter that uh, that you will be getting, or you should have started getting last week, uh, our BizBit newsletter. So the link will be on the newsletter as well. We would encourage all of you to uh, engage in asking questions. Throw your questions into the chat log, into your chat window. Uh, Kevin and I will, after uh, the webinar, Kevin and I will go through the questions and answer as many as we can. Uh, so with that being said, why don't we get started, Kev? So we're going to cover th uh, pretty much three important things today. Who and what is Traffic Geyser and how are we going to be able to help you with your business? Uh, we've also, in your... In your Trafficizer account, you have an Express Lane video uh, training series. I'm going to show you how to, how to utilize that. Uh, and we're going to go over the top 10 FAQs. When you registered for the webinar, uh, you were asked if you had any questions. So we're going we're gonna to take the top 10 questions that you asked uh, during the registration process, and uh, we're going to answer those. And your, your, your benefit from today is to understand how to best utilize Traffic Geyser, uh, how, how we have developed the program to make it benefit you to get your content distributed out and get the best results possible. Again, you're going to be able to ask your questions to us. Uh, we're going to answer them for you. And you're going to also learn from other folks' questions as they, as they ask them, and we answer them for them. Uh, it's going to benefit you. It might be something that you didn't uh, think about, uh, maybe a, a strategy that uh, somebody else has that you can now utilize and try for yourself. You want to add anything, Kevin? No, that sounds great. Okay. So first things first, what kind of questions are, are you going to be able to ask here and what kind of questions are uh, you going to ask through a support uh, email or uh, utilizing our knowledge base? Today, the questions that we'd like for you to ask us is, how does this work? How can I use this? Uh, the, the support questions are, are more of why did this happen or why did that happen, uh, more one-off questions. Uh, for the support portal, or uh, you can please utilize our knowledge base. We have so many answers in our knowledge base. The majority, of, and, and obviously I see a good number of the support tickets that come through, and we have absolutely no problem answering the questions, but we, we have found that at least 85% of the tickets that we receive as cases from all of our users, 85% of those of the answers that we are giving you are available to you through the knowledge base. So all all you have to do is click on your support portal, go to the knowledge base, uh, type in a couple keywords, and you'll get 
uh, results where though you they might help you where you didn't have to wait for us uh, a couple three or four hours to answer a ticket for you and just so everybody knows we are uh, answering tickets within the initial the initial reply that we give you is being answered within a six hour period so uh, the support portal is there the knowledge base portal is there uh, if if you're in dire need for an answer right now look at the look at the knowledge base otherwise this the ticket system that we have is being answered in uh, six hours or less in, in most cases okay now good content is the foundation for your success uh, our main job with our service is to get you found get you in front of the prospects the once that is done and we have uh, we have got your video or got your website uh, in front of somebody now it's up to your content to engage with those prospects and uh, that's probably the most important thing is if we can get you in front of them uh, and you've got good content in your video that is is going to gain their interest they're most likely gonna inquire more they're gonna go to your landing page and give you their lead information so they can get more information from you uh, if your if your content isn't uh, engaging or it's not interesting to them there's a very good likelihood that you're not gonna get that person to uh, click on your opt-in form and give you their information and yeah, I think me, yeah I think to, Kevin had some more to add to that yeah let me I'd love to add to that um, the thing that I'd like you all to understand about Trafficizer, uh, and we're really where Trafficizer shines, is you know it's it's really a, a great dashboard and tool to be able to uh, have one place that launches your good content out to the world. Okay, so for example, a, a lot of people get stuck, especially people that are just getting turned on to uh, internet marketing, or they're getting turned on to trying to do something on the internet for the first time for their business, they get stuck uh, thinking that Google is the only place where all the traffic is. And they're, they're overwhelmed with, oh, I gotta be number one on Google. I gotta be on the first page of Google. Google is, is, it does have traffic, but it is not all of the traffic that is on the web. Uh, go people don't hang out on Google, they're searching. They're, they're, it's, it's, it's an in and out, it's a traffic, it's a stoplight, you know, it's like, they're going through a, a, an intersection, okay, when, when they're on Google. Uh, there's so many other web properties that are out there where there's communities and people are also engaging into uh, that you want to get in front of as well. So what Trafficizer is really good at is allowing you to get your content into as many different web properties as possible so that you increase your chances and odds of, ha of, of an, and visibility of being increased throughout the web and not just so when Robin was explaining why it's so important to have good content, you want to really build the foundation of your online visibility and distribution with good content. You want to you know, create good content and get it out there, publish it through Trafficizer, you know, blog posts, social bookmarks, social media articles, and get it out there. And all that um, co good content is going to find the right person and that right person that likes your good content is going to be attracted to your good content and then be funneled back into wherever you're wanting them to go. And uh, one more thing to add to good content before uh, Robin continues is good content is not just you know a well written a, a, a well written document <laughs> a well written document well a well written <laughs> a, a well written document. Good content also has a good call to action. So whenever you're creating your content that you're distributing through, through Trafficizer, whether it be video or whether it be an article or a blog post, keep in mind the call to action that you're including in that content. If you're not including a call to action, that might be one of the reasons why you're not seeing good results. What good is a video if it's not telling somebody to do something? You know, if, if for example, if you're a chiropractor or if you're a, a dentist or, or um, and you send a, a video out that is you know answering some some real questions that people have about 
chiropractic, uh, you know, some concerns. Maybe they're investigating chiropractic and they just don't know about it. And you're sending a video out, and all you do is you give them the answer to the concern, but they have no way of following up with getting into contact with you or where can they learn more. And you're not including that in your content. You're leaving a lot of money on the table, and you're not capitalizing on the efforts that you're, that Traffic Guys is, allow, is allowing you to maximize. And so just remember, call to action really is going to help you create good content. So add your great content, your, your message, or whatever you're trying to, to promote out there, and make sure that it's got a really good call to action, and that's going to really help you with your foundation of using Trafficizer. Thank you very much. Let me ask you one other question, Kev. Uh, obviously, I see a ton of tickets that come through, folks that are submitting to video sharing sites, and maybe they've they've submitted three or four videos, and they send they send us a ticket, say, hey, how come I can't get ranked on Google or can't get ranked on Yahoo or Bing? And I've I've got four videos submitted out. How important within let's just let's just say Google right now. Within Google's algorithms, how important is it to uh, submit to articles directories, submitting to blog sites, submitting to bookmarking sites as well, instead of just submitting to video sharing sites? Well, I mean, one, I don't know the proprietary algorithmic uh, stuff of Google, um, but I will say that, you know, I've got videos that rank on page one of Google that get no traffic from Google. They actually get more traffic from uh, the video sharing site that's ranked. Uh, so, you know, people are using video sharing sites as search engines as well, and they're hanging out on them, and, and, and there's a community there. Now, the reason why we do video and the reason why we have article distribution and the reason why we have... Uh, blog distribution and social media distribution is because that is pretty much the f you know the full uh, backbone of uh, what's being consumed uh, throughout the web right now. So if you're putting out that content in those different channels, uh, you're going to increase your chances of uh, having more visibility and having more traffic coming to whichever web property you're wanting to, to direct that traffic to. So as far as, um, are you asking me, is video or articles more, which one is, is more important, or which one should people be focusing on? Which, which, one, is gonna, which one is gonna give the best results for uh, their submissions? Well, on it, that's, that's a good question because it really depends on um, the type of business uh, that you're in, okay? So let's say that you are um, and, and, you know, an author, speaker, expert, okay, you're really going to want to focus on hitting a lot of, getting a lot of video out there. You're, but you're also going to want to get some articles and content out there uh, to back up those videos. And, and another strategy that's really good is to submit your videos and then go grab those uh, links to where those videos are published and insert them in some of your articles and blog posts that you publish uh, through Trafficizer as well. And that will also help increase backlinks and, and, uh, exposure to those videos as well as the articles. Um, and that's going to, oh, I'm sorry. I, I always, I always like to lean, uh, it's, it's a very, it's very, um, you know, it's, it's, it's kind of a, you know, everybody's got their own opinion on it, but I like to lean towards um, really trying to do the most with video because video just converts better. You know, right. your people are, if they're listening to you or if you're in front of a camera, uh, it's going to convert better. If you're just submitting like a commercialized video, uh, you might not convert that well. I would encourage you to, um, you know, let's say that you're, you're using Traffic Geyser for uh, your own business or even for, for a client that you have. I would really encourage that you use, you try to get that client in the video instead of putting out a commercial style video that's just screenshots of, you know, ad looking images. Uh, right. Just because that's just going to convert better is you're going to warm up your, your, your client, your prospect, and uh, it's going to be like they already know you before they even meet, meet that person. So, uh, you know, that's just my opinion on that. And, and I don't remember what the exact percentage of uh, uh, click rate is, but uh, I think it's somewhere in the neighborhood of 80 or 85 percent of uh, videos that are on the first page of whichever search engine you're looking at. That, that 
link is or that video is going to be looked at before a regular uh, a regular hit. Uh, well, I mean, at. and I mean, I mean, I don't know. I mean, it, it, it's if it's got a video thumbnail, yeah. Does it get a higher click through rate? Of course. Uh, but what I want to encourage people to understand is that um, it's it's not about getting your video to be ranked on the first page of Google. It's about getting that video, getting your message, whatever it is, uh, for your your product, for your brand, for your um, your uh, you know uh, cause. It's it's getting it to as many web properties as possible. It's getting it to all the video sites. It's getting to as many article directory sites. It's getting to as many blog sites because there's communities that hang out on these blog sites. There's communities that hang out on video sites. And uh, do those all show up in the search engines? Yes, they do. Uh, but it's you're limiting yourself. You're limiting your thinking when you're just thinking, I'm going to get uh, a, a Google page rank a Google number one ranking. Um, right. That if that's a, a if that happens, then awesome, you know. Uh, but if it doesn't happen, it's not the end of the story because, just like I said a minute ago, I've got videos that are just out there on video sharing sites that bring me more traffic than having a number one ranking on Google. Correct. And uh, that's you know that's important, especially as the world is going more and more video. You're starting to see Apple TV. You're starting to see Google TV. Everything is going more and more and more and more video. Uh, so maximize uh, your efforts by creating video and getting them distributed to all the different video channels. And don't leave out articles. Don't leave out blog posts. Don't leave out social media because all of that is uh, it's it's kind of like if if you're you know it's kind of like you're eating a meal, right? You've got to have your protein. You've got to have your vegetable, and you've got to have your carbohydrate, your your, your carbs. You know, you want to have a well-rounded meal, right? Well, you want to have a well-rounded uh, distribution model uh, where, where you're hitting all of those different distribution channels and not just one because you are going to really be able to fine-tune and see. If you're just doing going this in the first time, you're going to be able to see, you know, what if, you know, you're distributing to Traffic Guy, out through Traffic Geyser and you start seeing that um, these certain article networks or these certain uh, video sites you're getting a lot more traffic on. Well, that that is super cool because now you can hyper focus, laser in on those particular sites, and you can uh, scale up your production or your distribution on those sites as well. And that's what's great about Traffic Geyser is it allows you to go ahead and, and distribute uh, all of your content instead of having to go into every single one of those websites by hand and upload a video or upload an article uh, by hand and uh, yeah. So, anyways, I can ramble on forever, but uh, we let's move forward. I th yeah, I think we've uh, pretty much clear uh, given the foundation. So we are going to go to the steps, and and these are uh, what most folks are here to uh, to learn today. Uh, when when you're coming in as a brand new member uh, or subscriber to Traffic Geyser. Uh, you don't have a clue on on which step to go, uh, which step to do first. So that's what we're going to do. Your first thing you're going to do is you're going to build a profile, uh, and the profile is the the way I look at a profile is it's you you giving us your key to get into your door. Your door meaning your YouTube account, your Daily Motion account, uh, your Facebook, your Twitter account, whichever, uh, and us being able to access the front door, drop off your content, and leave. So the profile is the most important thing to have done in order to have your content submitted to the most sites possible on our profile list. Uh, we're going to show you how to upload your content from your computer to your media manager folder. Uh, Kevin's going to talk a little bit about keyword research. We're not going to touch a whole lot on keyword research because of the fact that uh, today's call is to learn how to utilize our tools, not necessarily to give you a training course on keyword research, which hopefully most of you folks uh, are already doing on your own. And then finally, we're going to show you how to uh, complete or build a submission template and finally get your stuff put out, get your content out to the, uh, to the web. Sounds great. Okay, so with that being said, I am going to go to uh, 
a Trafficizer account and when you go you're going to access your profiles by going to your submit media tab and then selecting login profiles. I'm already there but we'll go there again and it's going to default you to uh, the default profile. That's a little bit redundant. Uh, and then now you're going to go down and you're going to see here that I've already got a profile built. Uh, but you're going to see nothing but a bunch of uh, blank, blank spaces. If I go here and create a new one, this is exactly what you'll see. I'll just make it a comma, okay? You're going to see a bunch of empty spaces. Uh, first thing you're going to want to do is decide, do you want to build the profile yourself or do you want Trafficizer to build it for you? Uh, and save you a lot of time and uh, uh, not, maybe not headaches, but it's it's just a it's a monotonous job. You've got to go to each site, you've got to register, you've got to go to your email, you've got to click on your verification link. So there's a number of steps to that are involved in building a profile. If you were to want Trafficizer to do it for you, uh, you could click on the click here to order pre pre-configured profile link. It will take you to this page here and you'll click on whichever profile you want. If you're a, uh, a Platinum 2.5 member and you recently purchased a gold profile from us, you notice when you got upgraded to Platinum that you've got a, a lot of empty spaces, uh, a lot of additional sites on the Platinum profile. If you've already paid us to build you a profile under gold, you can click on the link here for the $67 and we will complete the platinum profile for you. Uh, so it's just a matter of clicking on the link and filling out the, uh, the, the purchase form and then our profile department will get the task of building the profile for you and emailing you when it is completed and I believe right now they're taking uh, two to three days uh, if I'm not mistaken, and they email you with a, uh, an email that says, hey, Kev, your profile's in your account. Here's how you get to it. And then there's some disclaimers and some other information that you want to learn or want to know. Uh, you could also have custom, bro custom profiles built. And the custom profiles are us going to each of the sites and, and building a or registering an account for you with your specific name and all of your personal information the way that you are requesting us to uh, to set the profiles up for. Hey, so go ahead. Real quick, I want to go ahead and just uh, um, you know let let everybody know that uh, in in the right hand side of uh, the GoToMeeting panel is a place where you can uh, ask questions. So if you have a question, um, you know, feel free if it's a simple, small question that, that uh, either I or Robin can answer while the other is talking, like a yes or a no or, 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 or a quick little line, uh, go ahead and feel free to, to ask that question and uh, we'll, we'll do our best to, to get to them. Um, but uh, I just wanted to just go ahead and say that because I've noticed that uh, there's not any questions showing right now and I didn't know if anybody has, had asked questions yet. And if you if they did, then there might be some sort of technical glitch on our end that we would would have to address to make sure that we can see those questions. So, okay, thank you very much. So we're going to show you the steps of creating the profile on your own. Obviously, it's very simple to have us do it for you and pay us the sixty-seven or ninety-seven or one hundred seventeen dollars to do it. And, and keep in mind the setup of the profile. If you have us do it and you're do you're building a profile for a client of yours, you're most likely going to be getting a setup fee from that client. Uh, we don't want you to think that well, I got to pay traffic guys one hundred seventeen dollars to build me a profile. Well. Think about it as you're, this is a this is a job that you're doing for a client. They're paying you up front a setup fee, so that $117 or that $97 that $97 that you're paying Trafficizer, you're gonna you're gonna take that money out of the setup fee anyways. Okay, so if well, sorry about that. So if you're gonna build the profile yourself, the easiest way to do it is to Set up a username that you would like to use. Uh, 
Sorry about that. Okay, so you're going to, in, in the autofill section, you'll set up a username that you'd like to use. So we'll just say it's test, and then an email address as well. Go test at test.com, and then your password whichever your password is going to be. Now what this is going to do is this is going to auto automatically fill each of the uh, fields for all of the sites. This does not mean that the account is already, that the profile is already set up. All we're doing with the autofill is allowing so that you don't have to manually enter each of the fields. So we'll click on the select all sites uh, checkbox and click on the fill button it's going to automatically fill each of the sites now some sites require only a username some sites require an email address our system automatically knows which requires which so therefore you'll have some that give you just the username where some give you the uh, email address now what you need to do is go into each of the sites individually you'll click on Bofunk on the link there, it'll take you over to the Bofunk website. You'll click on register if it ever comes up. Okay, that's great. These things always take extra time when you're on a go-to meeting. <laughs> Live on a webinar. <laughs> there we go. Okay, you'll click on register and you put in your information. Make sure that the information he, that you put in here matches the information that you put in to the profile. And once you've done all of those, you'll click on your update button, which is right here, and you will get the system will automatically go to each of the sites and test the sites with the information that you've put into the uh, each of the fields. If it verifies, you'll get a green check mark. If it doesn't verify, you'll get a red X. Uh, the red X is obviously you're going to have to go back to the sites to figure them out, figure out why it didn't verify. Sometimes it's just a matter of you didn't you didn't click on the verification link that uh, that that site sent to your email address. Uh, Others, other sites will change a password. So there's a number of different reasons why they don't verify, but your first pass through, you should get uh, a good percentage of them that do verify. And then see, even here, I've got, I've got a couple that didn't verify. I think there's one more down here somewhere. Anyways, uh, it's fairly simple on how to set up the profile. It's just time consuming. And this is only a one-time shot that you have to do. Uh, for each of your clients. My suggestion is if you have multiple clients that you definitely use a different profile for each of them due to the fact that you don't want your chiropractor client to have uh, a house painter videos on their YouTube channel. You have anything to add to this, Kev? No, I think you did great. Right on, right on. Okay, now once you have your profile built, you're going to want to submit or upload, I apologize, you're going to want to upload your content. So you're going to go to your file management tab, you're going to go down to upload files, you're going to get the upload screen and here you will name the file whatever you want to name it. So we'll just just keep going with the, uh, the theme of the day for me at least which is test and click on browse. It'll take you to your computer and you will pick whatever whatever video it is that you're wanting to upload. So we'll find, I think I've got something in here. Uh, we'll just throw this one in there. So I've got a roofing uh, FLV file. Keep in mind that up here are the file types that we accept. One thing I definitely want to add to this and make sure that everybody understands is that uh, a lot of you guys are Mac users. Uh, I, I get grief every day from everybody, including Kevin, my dear friend, that I'm a PC user. Uh, <laughs> with, <laughs> with Mac users, I believe, and Kevin, correct me if I'm wrong, but does, does Mac not default to an M4V file when you're saving a, a media file? Yeah, it does. Uh, I th okay. Well, it depends. It depends. Uh, um, uh, it depends on what program you're using, but uh, like 
you know, M M MP4 or uh, or MOV. But it, okay. Yeah. One one thing I I notice quite often, and I get a lot of cases that are open up saying, "Hey, how come all of my videos failed?" Uh, it's because of the fact that the M4V file uh, formatted file was used in the submission process and for whatever reason I don't know if it's our system or if it's the majority of the sites and I would I don't I don't want to answer that but uh, because I don't truly know the answer but with Mac users if you save your file as an MP4 and submit it as an MP4 you're gonna have uh, normal success uh, we have seen way too often that M4V files do not uh, submit successfully nearly as often as the MP4. So that's just a, a little tip that I'm going to give uh, from everything, all the cases that I see where somebody had an M4V file that they submitted and got a, 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 a high amount of failed submissions. Utilize or, or use the MP4 format rather than the M4V. So with that being said, we still have to accept the M4V because of the fact that there are some sites that are that do accept it, uh, but just keep it, keep that in mind. Again, here's all of the file types that we will accept in our upload process. Uh, here I've got the FLV file. I'm going to I've already taken it from my computer. I'm going to drop it down into my list and now uh, I'm going to click on the upload button and it's a small file, 1.4 meg. It, it uploaded in about a second and a half. No, so now, easy. what's that? Nothing. Oh, I thought I heard somebody say that was easy. Well, it was. <laughs> <laughs> so now, uh, if you go, you could click here to go to your media manager folder and you will see that the test file is there, submitted today or uploaded today and now you are ready to build your template that you are going to utilize to submit your content. Now uh, Kevin was uh, very instrumental in the 2.0 submission tool that we have. Uh, it's, a, it's a lot easier for those of you that are on the call that, that used our 1.0 uh, submission uh, tool and now you're using 2.0, I'm sure most all of you agree that it's a heck of a lot easier to use and, and navigate through uh, than the 1.0 was. And before I get into each of the steps, is there anything that you want to add, Kevin, for, uh, from using the 2.0 compared to our older template? No. No. Very good. We will go right into submitting content then. So you're going you're gonna to go in without having a uh, a template built. You're going to click on your submit media button. You're going to go to a blank template. First thing you're going to want to do is you're going to want to make hold, sure that you up. select. Hold up a second here. Okay. Why don't uh, why don't I well, why don't we walk through some of the changes uh, from 1.0 to 2.0? Okay. Um, in in this on this screen, for for basically the example is um, if we scroll down. Uh, you'll see that there are three check boxes here on the, you, the the video form. There's save submit, there's bookmark, and there's share. Uh, these were not previously on the 1.0 submission uh, uh, for 1.0. And basically, what save submit is is that allows you to when you, it's it checks checked by default. So if you've got a brand new domain and uh, you, you know you've just established your website. What this is going to do is it's going to uh, distribute your content um, a little bit at a time. So let's say that you're going to submit the video to all the video sites shown below. It will submit, starting with YouTube first, it will submit the video to YouTube on day one, and then it will submit uh, to every single one of those other video sites that you've selected ev um, once a day. So it's going to go through one of them a day. So if you've got 10 sites that you're sending it to, it's going to take 10 days for that video to go through. The only reason why uh, this is there, you know, you can uncheck that and it'll submit them all the same day. Uh, but we've we've added that for some users because some users have experienced, uh, you know, promoting to their website too much and it affecting their uh, rankings in the search engine. 
and uh, since they have a brand new domain, they're of course they want things to look uh, naturally. So this just gives them a little bit more peace of mind that uh, they're not building too many backlinks and too much uh, promotions to their to their website to using their domain too quickly. Um, you know, if if you uh, have a, a site that's been established for quite some time and has some authority built onto it. Uh, you might want to uncheck that and just go ahead and submit. You know, you're not going to be be uh, you know penalized by Google or any other search engine as much. The other checkbox is 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 called bookmark, and when you check that, what that does is it will take your YouTube video uh, published link and it will submit that to the social bookmarks that you have selected below. And uh, scroll back up, and then you've got. The, uh, the last one is share, and that's basically just sharing that video uh, with social sharing sites like Twitter and, and FriendFeed and uh, Post. So that was something that was not a part of uh, 1.0, and uh, this is a, an improvement that kind of adds a, a lot more automation and um, distribution into a one submission. And then scroll below the form. Uh, now you've got this button called Add Another Video. Uh, in in the first uh, in 1.0, you couldn't add more than one video per template. Now you can add multiple videos in in this one project template. Uh, which you know, if let's say you have a client or you're doing this for yourself, and they give you you know 20 videos to send out for the year, uh, you can just set up all 20 of those videos all at the same project, schedule them out on which dates you want them to go out, where you want them to be sent. Uh, to and everything and uh, really just set it and forget it. So that's what's really great about uh, just the, the new layout and how you're interacting with it. So we can go forward now. I just wanted to uh, That's let perfect. Know about that. That's yeah. perfect. Thank you. Set it and forget it. <laughs> there you go. So so as Kevin was talking about, if you click off of the safe submit, you're gonna see that you you now have a date range that you can set up. So uh, that's where you'll Say I'm going to start it today, and I'm going to end it on the 24th. And if you have 10 video sites that you're submitting to over a five-day period, you're going to have most likely two per day that get submitted out. That's correct, right, Kev? Yes. Yes, it is. Okay. Now, video title uh, is the first field. And please, everybody, keep in mind this is. Uh, I think this is probably one of the most important parts about the. Uh, about the submission template is each field has tips. A tip window will pop up for each field. As long as you are s staying within our limits that we're suggesting to you with each of these fields, you're going to have a much better uh, chance of having a higher success rate with your submission than you would by not following the tips. So you click in the title field, you're going to get a tip window that says make sure that your title is keyword specific. Uh, you're going you're gonna to see that theme all the way through the template. So you'll put in your title. And, and you don't have to be so, uh, so you know, picky when it comes to your keyword. I mean, it, you know, you definitely want a keyword, so if you're targeting um, Orlando dentists, um, family dentist. You know, Orlando family dentist is your is your keyword that you're wanting to target. It's fine to go Orlando family dentist practice or uh, information on where to find an Orlando family dentist. Uh, you know, it's it's the you can use what what's called stuff. Uh, you know more info and you know the you know any kind of helpful words there the search engines are still gonna see the keyword in the title so it doesn't have to just be the keyword for the title you can you know have a little bit more freedom you want people to uh, be you know look at that title and, and understand what it is and not just to say you know because they're not robots they're not just going Orlando family dentist you know, it's it's you know, like in the example that the example was affordable, whatever it was. So you can even do affordable uh, Orlando family dentist or uh, premier. I mean, however you want to go about it, just don't get stuck on the title and just using the keyword by itself. Thank you very much. Absolutely, and I was I was going to tell the exact same thing. Uh, 
Keywords are important, but uh, you want to make it look as personable as possible. I, that's what I would suggest at least. Uh, next section is your uh, video file. Uh, you're going to click on the choose file. You're going to go to your uh, media chooser that pops up for you. You will select the file that you're going to use and we'll just use this one here. Now you've got your video file in there. Keep in mind that all of your videos, all of your sites are, st are still in red and especially for those that, that purchase pre-configured profiles. Uh, we get the question all the time, why are my video files all red still uh, or video sites rather? Uh, each of these fields have to be completed before the green light will open up for for these sites to be submitted to. And the reason for that is we're not going to allow an incomplete template to be submitted and to cause failures that you don't want to have. So we'll throw in the uh, URL that we want our traffic directed to. Description, again, description is uh, keywords uh, included. Uh, Keywords from your tags to your description to your uh, video title, uh, that's going to give you the best uh, possibility of having a successful submission and uh, given a chance of it having a higher ranking uh, throughout the submission. So here you're going to throw in your description. Uh, one thing to keep in mind here, uh, something else that changed from 1.0 to 2.0 is we are no longer allowing you, well I, I shouldn't say allowing because you can do it, but we are suggesting that you do not utilize the description, the media description field for your URL. Uh, there's a lot of sites that will not accept your your submission if your URL is included in this field. So what we have done is we have automatically uh, allowed, or the system automatically takes your URL that you have listed here and will put it into your, at the beginning of your media description for the sites that will accept it, that, that we know of in our system that will accept it. Uh, so keep that keep the URL out of there. The best results that you're going to get on a submission is if you keep this box below 200 characters. That, that 200 characters does include the URL that we add to it. So if your URL is 25 characters, you're going to want your media description obviously to be below 175 characters. Uh, we see quite a bit of cases asking why did this particular site fail, uh, then we'll look at the, the template, we'll see that you're writing a novel, uh, for example, and so many sites don't want. They just want a basic, what is this video about? Would, would you agree with that, Kevin? Would you agree with that, Kevin? Kevin is not there. Okay, no, that's fine. I would, I would agree, oh. man. <laughs> I didn't hear you, my friend. <laughs> okay, so now we're throwing our test, our, our tags in there, which uh, in four to six long tail. Uh, I think it's 32 characters uh, between commas, something like that, right, Kevin? I think it's in that ballpark, somewhere around there. Uh, then you'll click this, the category that you're that you want your uh, your video to be or your content to be categorized under. So we'll just say educational. Now you've got a ton of sites that are opened up for video. You'll see that the book, even though we have bookmark hey, and share. Go, go ahead, ahead and go ahead and click on uh, ecorp.tv. Okay, thank you very much. So you've got, a red, you've got a site that's in red and you think, well, I know it's set up in my profile, how come it's not being submitted to? And then you click here, you click on the on the red box and, and scroll down and it'll show you the reason why. In this particular case, eCorp is not set up in the profile with the username or password. If we go to, say, MySpace, MySpace, the reason that this one is most likely going to fail is the site requires a username uh, to be an email address. So that's something you'll have to go into your profile and change from a username to an email. 
Yeah, and when so when you see the, those red things and you know that they're not set up, all you got to do is click on the X and just deactivate them. And that way you're not going to have an issue with seeing these failures because they're not even going to be submitted. You're just going to be submitting to the green. Very good. Okay, now you've you've got your your bookmark and your share sites checked off, yet the sites are still gray down here. And you're thinking, well, I want to submit to these. That's why I clicked on those. Just click on your select all button for both of them, and you'll see the system uh, changes. In this particular case, this profile that we're using, the default profile, I do not have anything set up for the Facebook, Twitter, or any of the other uh, share sites. So that's why all of those are green, are, are red. So those none of those would be submitted to. So we'll just uncheck that. Once you're done, you can either, as Kevin said, you can click on add another video, or you can click on uh, save and make it go. My suggest, and, it, and we've got three different options here. You can either save the template if you're not ready to submit it out, or you can click on make it go, or you can click on save and make it go. My suggestion, especially for those of you that w want to make sure or, or keep track of things, rather, uh, it's always important to save your templates. So if you click on the make it go button, it's not going to save your template. You're, you're going to have access to seeing the information that was submitted out through your submission status list, but you're not going to have that template in your template file list to be able to utilize at a later date. So we'll click on save and make it go, and the system is going to ask us for a name to save it under, and we'll put in whatever we're going to put in. I'm not going to send it because of the fact that it's just uh, a whole bunch of nothing, but that's how you will submit your, your content out. After you click on go, it's going to automatically submit it out. Now uh, you've got your submission done and you want to see the, the results. You, you come back to it a couple of days later, you want to see the results for it. You'll go to your submit media, you'll go to submission status, click on submission status and it will show you all of your templates that you have and, and the uh, in, you can click on them individually. Here we obviously only have one. Click on the one that you're looking for and it will give you a list of sites that are done, sites that are still scheduled. It'll give you green check, uh, green boxes or green circles depending upon your browser for successful. It'll give you a red for failed and yellow for scheduled out and it will show you the scheduled date and time. Uh, in this case, I did this, temp I did this submission yesterday, and today I've got, out of seven submissions, or seven sites, I've got six that went through successfully. Uh, six out of seven is pretty dadgum good, if, uh, if you ask me. I think our average, or a, a quality submission uh, is between 80 and 85 percent. You're never so, going to get 100 percent. Yeah, go ahead. You're never going to get 100 percent submission uh, or success rate. And that's because of the fact that just things happen. Tech, uh, timeouts happen with sites. Uh, technology just doesn't work between uh, for certain reasons. But you're uh, you're never going to get 100%. So if you see a couple of fails, uh, like we have down in our bookmarking site, if you see actually we only have one there as well. But if you see a couple of fails, don't fret over it. It's not the end of the world. Uh, as long as you're getting 70 to 80 to 85 percent success rate, uh, you can consider that as a successful submission. Go ahead, Kev. Were you going to say something? I was going to say exactly that. So you're you're right on the money, man. Right on, right on, my friend. Tell, uh, uh, okay, you're, explain how they can. Uh, let's say that they stay, they sent something, but they don't want it to go out anymore. If if you say, oh, you know what, I don't want. Uh, my vitipedia.org video to go out because I've already submitted to that ma uh, manually and you don't want to have duplicate content. So if it's still in the scheduled uh, status, all you have to do is click on the checkbox next to the video, next to the site that you don't want and then click, simply click on the delete button. It will ask you, are you sure you want to take this out of there? You'll say, yep, I'm sure and bam, Vitipedia is gone. It will not be submitted to. If you want to look at uh, sites that, and, and get an idea of why a site failed, 
such as in this case Bofunk failed. You, you've got the link to show details. Click on that, it'll open up uh, the status for Bofunk and it'll show that it was an upload fail. And Snapshots don't always work, so don't think that you're going to click on the snapshot and automatically get the exact reason. And the reason for that is because sometimes the information that we get back from this site doesn't make any sense to us. We're, our submission or our snapshot is going to take the last transmission between our work doing the submission and the site before uh, the submission ended. So if it's an upload fail, sometimes you could click on the snapshot and it'll show exactly why. And in this case, it'll sh it gives us a reason that the CAPTCHA didn't work. Close that. And, and so hopefully you're going to get results on the snapshot. It's not always going to happen, though. Bookmarking sites, same, same exact thing. Uh, you can cancel any bookmark uh, submission you want. Now, Kevin, do you want to explain the importance of the bookmarking sites? Uh, you know, mainly it's just uh, you know getting your getting your message out in more places. Uh, social bookmarks, um, you know, are just a good way of getting it in front of that community. And uh, you know, there's times that. People can social bookmark their 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 uh, content. It shows up in Delicious, and then the community finds it, and then they're starting to social bookmark it as well because they like it. So Which adds to what? It, it it's getting the uh, kind of the snowball, you know, rolling down the hill to add to the authority of of uh, what you've just submitted. The authority is exactly the word I was looking for. Thank you very much, Kevin. <laughs> <laughs> uh, let's see. I think. Uh, Oh, we oh we should probably go to uh, to the article submitter, right? Uh, yeah, sure. Okay, all right. With the article submitter, uh, you might, depending upon the uh, membership level that you have, you might have your video submitter and your article submitter in the same uh, window. If you do and you only plan on submitting two articles, it's very important that you close out your video submitter. If you do not close it out, our system is going to be looking for a video to submit prior to doing the article submission. So close out your video submitter and then you have only your article submitter open. Now you'll go through, and, and Kevin, I'm going to have you explain the article submitter if you don't mind, uh, because sure. of the because of the changes between 1.0 and 2.0. Sure. Uh, basically, you're going to enter in the title of your article. Um, you're going to enter in your the author of the article, whether that's you or your client, uh, the URL that you're wanting to promote, whether it's their website or your website. Or some other web property. You don't always have to, you know, send people to your website. You can send them to other places throughout the web. Uh, and then you're going to want to write a, a short summary, which is basically kind of summarizing your article. It's the article description, and then uh, you know, go ahead and put in the main body of your article in the main con article content section. Again, there's helpful uh, tip boxes that appear to the right hand side. Below that is the resource info and bio section. Now this is where you'll see people that say, you know, hi, I'm John Smith, you know, I'm a real estate broker, I've been doing this for 50 years and uh, you know, I'm trying to sell some real estate to you, check me out right here. And uh, you know, that's kind of a standard default that most uh, it, article directories want. Uh, enter in your tags just like you did in the video And you know, select your categories, and uh, you can scroll down. Okay. Uh, select the article site that you want to send this article to, and uh, if if you that will those articles will turn green. The the they're they're red right now. The text is red because there's no content. Uh, but once you uh, fill in content, if you just want to type in some content real quick. Yep. That way he he can see, for example. Oh wow! There's all the questions. I have just I, I have now access to all of the questions. <laughs> Wonderful. 
I got a request to to make you and Helen organizers, so therefore. Okay, awesome. I was like, where is everybody? They're not asking anything. <laughs> awesome. Okay, everybody, I see your questions now. All right. So, okay, now, now you'll see. Okay, notice how there's one that's that's red, and that's probably because we don't have a profile, uh, comp you know, set up for that one. Uh, but then you just select, you know, uh, let's select article snatch. Okay. Or, yeah, select article snatch. And uh, it's, you know, hey, you know, it's unlikely to fail. Now, what's great about this is um, this was designed for two ways, okay? There is a debate that uh, is throughout the, the web uh, between uh, online marketers and SEO type people of, you know, submitting the same article to this, you know, many different article directories or submitting one article to one article directory. So what we, what I decided to do when I was designing this was to empower you to, uh, you know, but also safeguard you uh, for those people that are new at this. If you want to submit the exact same article to multiple article sites, then all you have to do is copy and paste that information into another article form by clicking the add article, another article, copy and paste the same article into this form and then just select another site and it'll submit that same site that same article to another article site um, so but then there's that other side of the coin of there's people that believe that uh, that's duplicate content and then that's not good to do um, you know duplicate content as far as Google is concerned um, when you when you're reading Google policies is um, mainly on uh, a, a domain, you know, it's not crossing over to different domains. It's mainly having duplicate content with throughout your, you know, one single domain website. So depending on which direction that you want to go, you can either add that same article into multiple article forms, or if you want to just add one article to one article site and add another article to another article site and another article to another article site, it's completely up to you. We're just trying to give you the, the, uh, uh, the freedom to do that. So we're not limiting you in any way. We're just presenting and we have it set up for just best practice. Okay. And uh, that's how you do it. And then you just hit, you know, schedule your date and then uh, you're ready to go. Not trying to make it inconvenient for them to submit articles then, correct? Nope, we're not. Okay. Looking out, we're, what we're really doing is looking out for your best interest. Uh, uh, giving you the ability to uh, do it whichever way you'd like, uh, but also keeping in mind that we're trying to protect as many folks as we can from uh, p potentially having issues uh, due to duplicate content. Is that how you would say it as well, Kev? Yeah, I mean, it's, it's just, as far as best practice, it's best practice is to send one article to one article site. Uh, but again, there are people that want to send the same article to many article sites. That's fine. Totally up to you. Now, the, now the only thing that they will have to do in Article 2 or Article 3 uh, is uh, change the title, correct? Uh, that's up to them. If they want to send uh, the same, have the same title, that's completely up to them. Okay. All right. Fair enough. I don't know if we have other than uh, the blog submitter. Same uh, blog same submitter thing. is blog submitter is the same, and uh, you know you're just going to be selecting. You know, you know, you're doing your author, your same stuff. Scroll down a little bit, and uh, click on the blog sites. Let me let me throw a tag in here so it opens the blogs. Sites up. There we go. This that you know we've got Live Journal, Blogger, um, Squidoo, Tumblr. These are all sites that you can submit c content to once you've got an account. There's also one called Blog Network. Now what that is is that's our own private blog network where we have our own private blogs that are um, you know have authority, have high page rank. And what we do is we give you five credits per month, and those credits do not roll over, okay? But what you're able to do is you're able to submit uh, a blog post with one link in that blog post to our private blog network five times a month, okay? And this really gives you good quality authoritative backlinks to your website or to the sites that you're promoting. So 
definitely work with that. Definitely start submitting. And, and also, I'll, I'll be honest with you, um, you cannot submit duplicate content to the blog network. If you've p published an article to the article sites and then you try to also send it to the blog network, it's not going to go through because we're going to see that it's published somewhere else on the web. And that's authority of our blog network. And uh, so you want to submit only unique content, only content that's not published out anywhere else and with one link into it. Outside of that, uh, you can submit to these other blogs and then Robin, you can explain to them as far as them uh, creating their own blogs and just like you've got the Robin's test site there. Correct. Okay, and and that's that's the the next question I was going to uh, pose uh, before we finish up this portion of it. But it, if you want to submit a blog to a to a, a blog site that you're already uh, the administrator of, you can go to your training. I'm sorry, to your tools tab, and then you go down to uh, either create a blog, which is going to be a WordPress based blog site that you are developing and creating through Trafficizer, through our tools, or you can add a blog such as this and now you can set up your own uh, blog site that you're already posting to and that will add it to the profile so that you can use our submission process to submit to that blog site as well as the, the ones that we already have included in the site or in the profile. That's right. Okay. And with that, I think that we have pretty much completed the, uh, the submission process. Can you think of anything else that we may have left out? Not at all. All righty. Let us go to back to our slide presentation and I'm going to and please if again like Kevin asked earlier or suggested earlier now that we have the uh, the questions uh, coming through uh, please ask any question that you may have regarding the submission process we will answer it as soon as we are completed with the webinar uh, Tip of the week. I think this is a very important tip. We have a lot of new users uh, or new subscribers that uh, are Internet Explorer uh, users. Uh, you're going to have a lot more success utilizing and optimizing your Trafficizer account if you are using Google Chrome or Mozilla Firefox. Not that we dislike Internet Explorer for any reason whatsoever. It's just that a lot of our, the majority of our programs are Java based programs, and Internet Explorer is not a very Java friendly uh, browser. You will have a lot less headaches uh, if you utilize our programs or our, your Trafficizer account by using either uh, Google Chrome or Firefox and obviously if you're on a Mac you'll use Safari uh, as well but to avoid any headaches and I'm gonna throw this out there because of the fact that I see it all the time avoid additional support tickets or support tickets that you wouldn't have to uh, open up if you were using or not using Internet Explorer do yourself a favor don't use Internet Explorer on our uh, our software and it's not just our software there's a lot of there's a lot of websites that uh, IE8 or IE9 just don't really work well with okay so that is my tip of the week uh, let's go with our interest uh, links of interest uh, these are things these are links that you might uh, want to take a look at and I think Kevin is gonna uh, go with the cross-channel mojo link yes I'm going to put that here for all to see I think he's gonna throw it in throw something into your chat okay there there's those three links okay so cross-channel mojo that cross-channel mojo is is uh, one of our products that you may you may have heard about, you may have not heard about. Basically, it, it's uh, really built upon um, cross-channel marketing, and that's basically cross-channel marketing means using one marketing channel 
like direct mail or mobile marketing to support or promote another channel like the internet. And what Cross Channel Mojo is, is we have quite a few uh, Traffic Geyser members as well as instant customer members that are using um, these tools as well as, well as other tools and uh, they've got awesome systems for doing cross-channel marketing, um, whether it's mobile, direct mail, and integrating it with the web, with, 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 the, uh, with the internet, all in one place in such a way they came together, we, we turned it into cross-channel mojo, they give away their campaigns, they show you how they do it, they show you how they're, 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 they're being successful and they're making their money, and uh, it's, it's very cool. So it's, again, leveraging the whole concept of uh, cross-channel promotion. Uh, not just sticking to one place, not just sticking that one place is where you need to be, but in all the places. And uh, Cross Channel Mojo is that place to learn all of these uh, systems, all of these strategies that are full systems. It's their systems that they've developed themselves and are sharing in Cross Channel Mojo. So I encourage you to check that out. And uh, there's a great video once you first land on that page that explains everything to you uh, with clarity. Thank you very much, Kevin. Uh, next link is if you're on this call today and you are not a member of Trafficizer, uh, we encourage you to uh, to give Trafficizer a test drive. Uh, go to the link that Kevin has listed in the chat. Uh, we'll give you 21 days. I think it cost a buck. Uh, 21 days of, of free time to uh, give it a shot, try it out, see if it works for you. Uh, my guess is that if you if you use it enough that uh, within that 21 days that you're going to like what we have to offer and you're going to stay with us. Uh, so give that a shot. For those of you that are uh, more in the marketing consultant uh, field where you're hitting the streets and 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 hitting the brick and mortar businesses uh, looking to help local mar local businesses with their internet presence uh, or with increasing their their traffic uh, looking to uh, to gain gain prospects that they didn't have before uh, take a look at fusion uh, We've, it's it's what we call a business in a box. Uh, we started Main Street Marketing Machines uh, two years ago, and uh, we've we've gotten it to the point where Fusion is just uh, it's it's everything that you need in one uh, within one website. You don't have to go to uh, multiple websites to you to get all of the tools that we have available to you uh, through Fusion. So take a look at that one. Uh, as I told you at the beginning of the show, the webinars are all, uh, the replays are going to be available on both our blog site as well as our uh, newsletter that goes out every Friday. So if you missed it or you want to uh, touch, uh, touch up on something that you, that you forgot, uh, go to the blog site or go to your newsletter that you should have in your email box, uh, inbox tomorrow, uh, and you'll have access to it there. Okay, so... Um, Kip brought up a, a, a question basically saying that um, she said there's been three different links for webinar replays shown. Uh, the one on the presentation says webinars, uh, mine says webinar, and uh, uh, there's another one that came. So let me think, does, does mine say webinar? It does. So mine is a typo. I forgot to add the S on the end of webinars on that link. Okay. So. The other one is just the URL for the blog, which will have the webinar on it. Okay, great. So just wanted to clear that up for everybody in case they got confused, and I do apologize for my <laughs> poor typing skills. And if anybody heard the lovely Brit in the background, that is Helen. We love Helen. Hi, Helen. She probably muted herself. Hi, Robin. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> okay. Yep. Uh, next uh, we're getting towards the end of it. Uh, let's go through the uh, the top ten questions that y'all uh, have submitted to us. Okay, first question is how fast can I start seeing results? Uh, Kevin, you want that or you want me to take it? No, oh, go for it, man. All right. It uh, it absolutely depends on uh, what you're submitting, the results that you're looking for. Are you look? Are you saying what? And these again, the all of these questions came from you, uh, listeners. So. We don't know what results that you're looking for. Are you looking for first page results on the search engines, or are you looking at what are when am I going to start seeing my results in my 
task status list, my submission status list. It all depends on what you're submitting. If you're looking for the results on the on the web, uh, that could vary. Uh, you could see results with uh, rankings is it maybe as soon as uh, two or three days, or it might take a, a couple of weeks to see anything happen. Uh, so that's really a a broad question, and it's not something that I I think that we can answer just uh, just on this particular call. What, what do you think, Kev? Uh, yeah, I mean that's something that um, we can go into a little bit deeper on another webinar where we kind of uh, uh, get into kind of you know niche specific you know where if you're an author expert speaker or if you're uh, you know a service business it just depends on what type of business. Um, also, uh, real quick, there's a question that just came up. Um, how can I subscribe to the Friday's newsletter? Um, Helen, do we have a link to that or, or um, that we can give them? Do you know of? Um, if, I'm sure if they are on this webinar, they are subscribed. So, okay, um, cool. Well, that clears it up. If you are on this webinar, you are subscribed. Super cool. Edit. So you'll you'll get the the newsletter every Friday, as well as you'll get your reminders uh, every Thursday, uh, Wednesday, and Thursday prior to this uh, to the uh, to these calls. Okay. Second second question: Why do pre-configured profiles fail uploads? There's a number of different reasons. It doesn't matter if it's a pre-configured profile that we built for you or one that you did yourself. I think we touched on this uh, during the. Uh, during the results portion uh, of the presentation or the webinar uh, where there's a number of different reasons why a, a submission may have failed. Uh, don't fret upon the, the one or two that did fail, especially when you have seven, eight, or nine that, that went through successfully. So I wouldn't necessarily uh, be too concerned about a single upload failure. If it's a number of failures, then that's a completely different story, and that's something that you'll want to uh, open a open a ticket with our support department on. And that uh, that email address, if you're not doing it through your support portal in your Trafficizer account, would be help at trafficizer.com. And I think Kevin is putting that in the chat window right now. Uh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I was answering a question. Say that again. Oh, I'm sorry. Help at trafficizer.com for any support tickets. Okay. So again, there's a number of different reasons why a, a submission may fail upload, uh, but if you get a series of them, uh, uh, send us a ticket and we'll, we'll take a look at your case individually and answer the question. Next one, what is the and, largest... And please be sure when you do that... Sorry, Robin. That's okay, go for do it. That. Okay, yeah, please be sure if you do that to tell us which profile and also which sites failed because that helps us answer you so much faster. Thank you very much, my dear. Thank you. Uh, next one, what's the largest file size I can upload into Trafficizer? Our system allows you to upload up to 200, megs, uh, 200 megabit file size. Uh, keep in mind that most of the sites that we submit to will not allow or accept anything over a hundred meg. So even though you're allowed to submit to, two, uh, I'm sorry, upload 200 meg, uh, you're going to get a. If you're over 100 megs, you're going to get a lot of failures. So I would suggest keeping it below 100. And and be, not to mention that a 200 meg video, that's probably seven, eight minutes long, uh, depending upon the file format, you're not going to get a lot of folks that's, that last the full seven or eight minutes when, uh, when you've got that size of a video out there. Uh, I, don't, I don't know if there's anything to add to that, Kevin, if you want to. I... No, it's, you pretty much covered it. Yeah, that's what I thought as well. Okay, next one is, what type of sites uh, will I submit, be a, will I be able to submit my content to using Trafficizer? We have uh, six different uh, site types that we submit to uh, that are in your profile. Video sharing sites, blog sites, podcast sites, bookmark sites, share or, or status sites, and article sites. I think that about answers that question. Next one, how do I best leverage Trafficizer for local business? 
And this goes back to the question or the answer that Kevin gave for the first one of, about seeing results. This is more, this question uh, would be more of a niche related question uh, that we could get into, uh, that we will get into in a, in a future webinar. But this goes, this goes to the, the, what do you say, geo track, uh, geo uh, using loc locality uh, yeah. Along with I, your keywords, I will give them. A, I will give them a tip just to uh, you know, a, 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 so they don't have to wait. Uh, at least get them a, a fast start, fast action, fast start tip. Oh, you didn't um, like the teaser, huh? <laughs> well, <laughs> well, maybe this will tease them even more. So, okay. uh, you know, how to best leverage TG for a local business? Uh, I'll give you one tip, and then uh, we'll we'll try to dedicate an entire. Uh, a webinar in the future to uh, focusing on local business. Um, so one tip is that when you're submitting your videos that are for that local business, uh, go ahead and put in the description uh, their uh, contact information, their 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 citation, their their company name, their address, their you know city, zip code, their phone number, uh, just like it would look on their website just like it would look on Google Places. And um, every time that a video gets submitted, there's now another citation that is on the web. And it gets spidered by Google. And the more correct and accurate uh, profiles, the uh, citations that uh, Google receives, uh, you act it actually starts helping optimize uh, your ranking and your authority within Google Places um, for your local businesses. So. That's a little tip on how to leverage Trafficizer for your local business by Kevin Barnes. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Kevin. Okay, next one. I think we have five more, and then we've got to uh, uh, put, a, put an end to this, although we're having a great time. Uh, let's see, next one. Uh, my customer only supplied an audio file. How can I make a video to submit? Uh, one, one way to do it is to utilize our slideshow creator that you have access to in your, uh, from your tools tab in your Trafficizer account. If you have uh, JPEG, and I believe that uh, the slideshow creator only uses, utilizes JPEG, video, uh, JPEG images, but if you've got a series of JPEG images that you've uploaded into your Trafficizer account, you can utilize the slideshow creator to make a video You'll have your audio that you've already uploaded into Trafficizer that you could use as your background for that particular slideshow, and the audio will or the, your slideshow will play out. You've got an option to uh, play out the the number of slides throughout the seri the length of the audio track. So if you've got five slides and you've got a minute's worth of uh, audio track, you're going to have uh, my math is just terrible. What was that? Uh, five, ten, t twelve seconds per slide uh, to cover the audio track. I think that's about all that we need on that one. Yeah. Next one. Why are all my sites red in my template? Uh, we showed that to you uh, when we were showing you the submission uh, template. You have to complete all of your fields. Have to have all of your fields filled prior to the template opening up the sites to show the green status. Next one, uh, how will TG help me attract new patients for my, tra for my chiropractor, uh, it's hidden there, my chiropractor practice. Uh, that again goes back to Kevin's, uh, Kevin's answer on uh, targeting uh, certain uh, niches and we'll, we'll get more into that at a later date. If uh, whoever it was, if they're on this call and they'd like more information on this, feel free to send me an email at help at com, and I will contact you directly uh, with a better answer than uh, what we've given today. Although I don't think the answer was bad at all. Uh, I'll, I'll be able to expand on it for you. Next one is should I fill in all the prof all the sites in my profile? Uh, absolutely. You want to you want to have your content out to as many sites as you can get them out to. Uh, be it video sharing sites, article sites, blog sites, 
uh, bookmark right. status. You want them, you want him to go. You want your content to go to as many as possible. And and one of the main reasons why is because the search engines uh, look at that as being an authoritative figure. The more content that you have that is out there uh, in different site types, the the better likelihood that the search engines not, again not just co not just Google but this, all of the search engines are going to see you as an authoritative figure uh, for that particular uh, topic yeah so and, and really and really the um, you know the, the whole thing is like I was mentioning in the beginning of the webinar uh, Google is not the only place where there's traffic um, to just you know be on Google you're limiting yourself you're you're you know, leaving a lot of money on the table, you're missing out on the bigger piece of the pie. Correct. Okay. Uh, last question: How do I track the results from my from my submissions? Uh, not sh again. Not sure what this particular caller is asking. As far as are you looking for the results on the search engines, or are you looking for your results uh, of your particular submissions through our uh, submission status? or our results page. If you're looking for results uh, through your submission, all you have to do is go to your submission status uh, screen that we showed you earlier and it'll show you the, your results. If you're looking for results from the uh, from the search engines, uh, that again that could take time. You could have some results in three days, you could have some results in, in uh, two weeks, but it all depends on uh, the search engines at that point. As well as obviously your keywords. If you, yeah, if and and go ahead. No, I was just gonna say if you're using keywords in your in your submission and your uh, your keyword is targeting uh, I don't know 20 million competing pages, there's a very good likelihood that you're not going to be seen on the first couple of pages uh, or on YouTube's uh, first couple of pages. If you're targeting under a million or under 750,000, then you're gonna have a lot better chance of being seen. What yeah, I, you know, I was just going to add the fact of, uh, you know, as far as, you know, results go, uh, like I said, you know, it, it's kind of like, here, here's a good example, you know, if, if you're going to buy, uh, which I've done in the past, uh, radio ads, okay, uh, if you're going to pay for a week and think that you're going to get your phone ringing for a week's worth of radio ads, uh, you got another thing coming. Because you know, when it comes to radio, it's all about top of mind awareness. It's all about uh, top of mind uh, real estate, the mind, the real estate of the mind. And so, you really want if you're going to do an effective radio advertisement, you're going to really you know leverage three months of getting that ad for for three months, and then you're going to start seeing a return on your investment because now people are going to recognize it. They're going to be familiar with it. Uh, if if we apply that to the internet, right? If you've got nothing on the internet anywhere, and day one you send out some content, well, it would be awesome if day one you sent out your content and all of a sudden you had a, you know a ton of people flooding to your website or to your promotion that day. That would be wonderful, and and if you did, I'm sure that everybody would love to work with you because you would have the secret to the ultimate success. But it just doesn't happen like that every day for most people. So keep in mind that this is, you know, a, a, a workflow. This is a process. You're getting your message out there, distributing it throughout the web, and the more that you send out, the bigger footprint that you're going to have on the web. The more visibility you're, you're going to have, is going to increase on the web. The more your authority, the more your top of mind awareness, people are going to run into you and, and uh, see your brand everywhere, see your company everywhere, and you're going to start building traffic. And I want to encourage you to really leverage uh, these, the amount of submission credits that we give you with your Traffic Geyser account because, I mean, we give you a ton of submission credits. I mean, you just need to sit, get some content and just push it and push it and push it. And I guarantee you, if you're pushing out content once a week or twice or three times a week, the person that's doing it three times a week, they're going to get re results faster than the person that's only doing pushing out content once a month. It's just, uh, you know, the amount of content you're going to have, the, the, your footprint's going to be bigger, your visibility is going to be bigger than everybody else, and uh, you're going to be everywhere. And when people see that you're everywhere, they're going to trust you more and they're going to give you more authority 
uh, or, or more value than the people that they're not seeing that they only run into once. So when it comes to results, just keep that in mind. You know, it's not about just submitting one campaign, you know, doing one submission and thinking that there's going to be a flood of traffic that's coming to you. Uh, it's about, uh, you know, rinse and repeat. Just push your content out there. Make sure you have a good call to action uh, because sometimes it's not just submitting the content. You know, you could submit, you know, stuff that doesn't have a good call to action and it's poor quality content. And now you're like, how come I'm not getting results? It's because, you know, I'm not showing up on Google. That's not the case. It's because your content's not good or because you didn't have a call to action. So you really want to take a step back and look at your entire campaign and go, okay, do I have a good call to action? Am I offering value in my content? Meaning I'm not just shoving marketing you know, garbage down their throat, but I'm really giving them something to take away from their, their experience for running into my content and causing them to you know, know, like, and trust me and want to find out more about me and take my call to action and visit my website and get on my list. That's what you have to step back and, and, and ask yourself every time that you're setting up a campaign to submit out. Uh, so, yeah, I don't want to ramble, but there you that, go. That's okay. Very good. And not to mention, uh, tra Trafficizer does not have a magic button. Uh, we, we, we submit, we do your job for you with the information that you're giving us. So if you're expecting uh, miracles off of a uh, single submission, uh, ma Traffic Geyser, like I said, Traffic Geyser doesn't have the magic button that's going to make uh, that single submission uh, show up immediately. Awesome. Awesome. Okay. And I believe that that is the last question. Uh, again, if we have any more questions, uh, Kevin and Helen will uh, read them out after we've completed and we'll get those answered. I know we're running way late, uh, but hopefully this information that you've gained today uh, has helped you understand the whys and hows of our, uh, at least right now, of our submission tool. Okay, so what we've learned today is uh, learn that building a profile is, is uh, paramount to having a successful submission. Uh, utilizing or uh, going to your profile manager and building it. Uh, we learned how to upload content uh, to your folder, and and I understand that these uh, some of these or all of these actually are very uh, uh, simple. Uh, but there are some folks that just didn't have the answers and didn't know how to do it. So that's exactly why that we went through this today. Third, uh, building your template and getting your your content uh, submitted out to the to all of the sites. Uh, so with that, I am going to introduce a new hero uh, that we have, uh, Emma Tibbins, uh, Tibbins, sorry about that. I had to email her and ask her how to pronounce her last name. <laughs> but Emma has been with us for uh, two and a half years. She uh, she started out as a part-time marketer, uh, she uh, marketing consultant. She wasn't sure what she wanted to do or how she was going to go about doing uh, doing the job. Uh, she found out about Trafficizer. She went to a uh, to an event. I believe she she went to the uh, Main Street 1.0 event that we had a couple of years ago. It might even have been Firepower, but regardless, she went to our first event. She met Mike. She was uh, completely enthused uh, and engaged with what she heard at the event. And two and a half. And and, and at at that time, uh, she told me that she was lucky if she could cut and paste something on a computer. Two and a half years later, she is an author of a book. She's a co-author of another book. She has over 220 videos. That number is actually wrong. She has over 220 videos on YouTube, on her YouTube channel. She is commanding between $3,000 and $15,000 per uh, customer to obtain her services. Uh, this is real life story. Uh, it's a it's a great story. The gal uh, the gal was down. Uh, she was, and I think she's okay for me to uh, say this. But she was she was near bankruptcy uh, two and a half years ago, and now she's uh, she's an authority within the industry. She's doing speaking engagements. She's making money from her speaking engagements. She's got she's authored her book. Uh, she's co-authored the other book with Mary uh, Smith, and she has. All of she has Trafficizer to thank for most everything that she has been able to accomplish in the last two and a half years, and that's not a selfish 
selfless plug for Trafficizer. This is just her view of what Trafficizer has meant to her over the last two and a half years, generating thousands of dollars in income. Uh, and and y'all could read uh, everything, the top ten, her top ten uh, things that Trafficizer has done for her: uh, sustainable business, trusted brand, success and results. Uh, she's got a real business. She has passion uh, and tools to equip many more businesses. She loves going out and helping local market, uh, local businesses with their marketing efforts. And and she doesn't love it uh, for the dollar. She's she's got that now, but she loves it because of the fact that she's able to help. Uh, she's able to help businesses prosper. Those businesses have families. She's helping. So she, the way she looks at it, she's helping families, not just businesses. She's keeping businesses open, but she's also helping families. Uh, she's gained self worth. Uh, uh, she's gained uh, respect of family members and friends. She feels that she has a purpose in life now. Uh, she's uh, a way to be blessed and be become a blessing. And she has hope for her family as many of as well as other families. So. Emma, thank you. We appreciate you being with us for the two and a half years that you've been. I'm glad that we can help you uh, be in the position that you're in. And of the folks that are on this call, we want more of you to be in the same position. Uh, two and a half years may seem like a long time, but it's a very short period of time going from not having a whole lot to having everything that you need. Uh, that's the way I'm looking at it, and Kev, uh, I'm sorry, Emma, thank you very much, sweetheart. We appreciate it. Kev? Yeah, that's fantastic. Um, well, real, real quick, I want to go ahead and ask, um, I, I just, I'm curious to see um, if you're on a trial, if you're on the trial of Traffic Geyser right now, and you're, you're not a subscriber, you're not a, a monthly subscriber to Traffic Geyser, I would love if you could raise your hand uh, in in the control panel to you know uh, to go to meeting if you just click on raise your hand I would love to just see how many of you guys are, are on your trial and uh, you know I just you know I'm glad that you're you're here with us and uh, I'm excited to be able to be on this webinar and help empower you to find greater success here on traffic guys okay do you have uh, while folks are raising their hands uh, do you have Helen or Kevin have any questions that uh, we can answer before we end this or have yeah. we answered them all no here's a question that might be easy to answer Kevin if you upload a video to Facebook using traffic geyser where does it go to your fan page or question um, well we know that it goes to your video file in on on Facebook um, depending on how you have your fan page or your your Facebook site configured, you'd have to go into your edit page settings. Uh, again, I'm not a, uh, you know, I'm not a, a Facebook uh, trainer, but uh, you, you, depending on how you have your, your, your tabs set up, it used to be tabs, but they, we just call them tabs, sorry. Um, you know, everybody has their default tab set up differently, um, but your wall, it will show up in your wall, and uh, when you uh, submit it to Facebook, it goes into your videos, uh, your your video page pretty much and uh, you know get publishes to your wall to let people know that you just you know created a video so that's pretty much what it does Great. thanks Kevin what about this one is there an easy way to resubmit the failures when you're doing a submission through our system Robin absolutely uh, you if you go to your task status or your submission status list and you you know of the sites that have failed you can go back to that same template that was used you might have to jot down the sites that were successful because you obviously you don't want to resubmit to those sites jot down the sites that were successful go back to the template that was used and deselect those sites fix your issue whatever the issue may have been whether it was a login issue where you have to go to your profile and fix that or if your media description was too long or you had too many tag words fix whatever issue the whatever the issue was deselect the sites that were that were submitted to successfully and give it another shot but also again keep in mind don't focus on the negative of the failed submissions 
uh, if you can fix them and submit a second time and they go through, great. If they don't, move on. You've, you've, you've done one submission. You're ready to do another one, and just keep going with it. If you see a trend, email us at help at trafficizer.com. Have m myself or any of the other wonderful support members that we have, and we've got a great group of support members. I just want to let everybody know that. Uh, not just saying it because I'm one of them, but we, we've got a, a, a heck of a team, and we're all proud. I, I think Helen would say the same thing. We're, we're proud of every member that we, every uh, team member that we have uh, and the efforts that we put out for everybody. So I think okay, so that will answer that, huh, Helen? Perfect. I have a one that I'm going to answer. It's uh, what exactly <laughs> is the difference between custom and platinum profiles? Um, a platinum profile we create for you as a generic, like the one that Robin demonstrated today. It's as if you have a virtual assistant whose name is RJ Williams. When we create a custom profile, we use the business name or um, as close to it as we can get if it's not already taken. So that's very much more specific and um, looks like the name of the business. That's the difference. Robin, is there anything you'd like to answer on here? I, I You know what? I have uh, not even looked at the questions, but I figured that you and Kevin would. And if we, we don't are. have We're it, looking. Okay. Yeah, let's take uh, let's just to take uh, one more question because we're already um, half hour two, over. Yeah, we're already in. So let's take one more question. But you know what? We we're a half hour over, but we've I think uh, we still have about ninety five percent of the folks that started the call. So thank yes. you all for hanging in there. Hopefully, this information that we're giving you guys today is uh, is beneficial to you and understanding uh, what Traffic Geyser can do for you. Kevin, here's one about um, articles and comments. Is allow comments the default? Do we want this? Um, if we wanted embed checked but not comments, what if we're not keeping up with the article site daily? Okay, here here's uh, um, some just my own personal advice and opinion. Uh, it's it's kind of one of those scenarios um, for for using you know the tool. Everybody's going to have kind of have their own preference. Um, if you're creating great quality content and um, you know you you can totally allow comments okay and comments are not a bad thing what people do get scared of is you know we've got some people that are using traffic geyser to promote uh, attorneys for example and attorneys don't necessarily want negative stuff said about their 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 cases or you know maybe somebody that doesn't like them finds their content and and does some bad commenting so attorneys would not really want that so when they're putting their content out there you know they're gonna wanna deactivate that the the comments because they would rather have a lot of, of, of control if you're a chiropractor or if you're a massage therapist or a photographer uh, or a life coach and you know you're not really in that world you know, you're you're not going to be running into people that are just you know saying bad stuff or whatever. And you really got good content that you're putting out, you know. And you want to you know let the comments be allowed. Then feel free to do that. Don't don't limit yourself. Um, you know, even in even even negative comments though. What here's the funny part. Even negative comments uh, help you in ranking in the search engines and ranking even on video sharing sites because it's showing that you have activity. Uh, it's very difficult for uh, search engines and video sharing sites to know if it's a negative comment or a good comment, you know, unless they do a thumb up or a thumb down, but chances are, even if they, they did a negative comment, the search engine's just gonna be like, hey, this has got activity, uh, it's a comment. So it's really up to you, just, you know, you make the decision that if you want comments to, to be allowed, that's, you know, that's totally up to you. Uh, does it help? Sure, it can help. Is it going to hurt you? No, it's not going to hurt you. If you deactivate the comments, it's totally not going to hurt you. Uh, you're you're just going to have the same impact as you would if uh, you had comments. Um, so yeah, I mean, it, it, you could go either either or. But that the attorney example is just kind of uh, one that I've definitely experienced, and uh, you know that's just there for those kind of people to make sure that definitely no comments are going to be activated. Wonderful. And one final thing, Robin, can you tell everybody when the next webinar is taking place? So that we our webinars, to it? 
Absolutely. Our webinars will be every Thursday afternoon, 2 o'clock Pacific time, 3 o'clock my time, and 5 o'clock on Kevin's time, uh, East Coast. Uh, so you will get a reminder every, uh, every Wednesday night. Of, uh, or 24 hours prior, as well as uh, I believe we're, we've got it set up to send you a reminder half hour prior to, uh, or an hour prior to each of the each of the calls. So that is that. I think you know what I think I saw a couple questions in here, and then we'll we'll wrap this up. Karen asked a question. Can you see that, Helen? I'm scrolling. Okay. <laughs> Where did it scrolling, go, Karen? You can probably hear me clicking, clicking. I can't see it. Must have been answered. Must have been answered. Okay. Uh... Yeah, it's it's been it's been answered. Okay, we're cool. Good to go, Robin. I think we're good to go. Uh, everybody, okay. Our next episode, our next show, next call, next week is going to be on our website builder. Uh, our new website builder in our 2.5 platform. Uh, again, every week is going to be a a new tool or a different tool within our Trafficizer uh, system. So next week will be the website builder, and Kevin will be on with us again next week. Uh, so there you go, Kev. You have anything to uh, close with? Um, my closing thoughts. Uh, by Kevin Barnes. No, <laughs> closing yeah. thoughts. I, I just I would say um, it's all about taking action, and it's all about using the tool. If you you focus too much on uh, you know trying to figure everything out, and you don't use the tool, you're not going to gain ground. You're not going to gain traction. You're not going to start getting visibility. Uh, you know, I would encourage you. That if you are the, the the lazy type or you're the type that that you know really struggles, you know I would encourage you just set a goal for yourself of I'm going to do one submission a week at least, you know, uh, and then you know you you start meeting that goal. Try to go okay now let me do two submissions a week, and and set that goal for yourself. And uh, I, I I promise you you will see see good results and uh, people will start running into your content and uh, depending on how you're positioning yourself. Uh, you'll start seeing your goals met. So go for it. Thank you very much, Kevin. The uh, It looks like there's probably a handful of questions that are still out there. Helen, if I were to, uh, will I have access to be able to submit uh, to answer them directly? Yes. What I will do is we'll make sure that we have these so that you can respond directly to folks. And, okay. Um, we just want to wish everybody a very safe and pleasant evening and thank them for joining us tonight. It's always a pleasure. And thank you, Robin, for a great job, and we'll see everybody next week. Thank you, Helen. Thanks, Kevin. We'll talk to you guys soon. And everybody, thank you again for attending and, and staying with us for as long as you have. Hopefully it was uh, of use and, and of benefit to you guys. Have a good evening. Thank you. Thanks. Good night. Good night.